boy, it's been rough beginning. Uh, the first time out, we got got onto some fish. Since then, well, we can't even find a fish to save our life. I don't know what's going on, but it's been rough. I figured, you know what, I got to go back west tomorrow. But why not come up and try one more time? And surely it can't be another skunk day, but I got about 20 minutes here yet. And if I don't get nothing, it's another offer day for me. And I uh, got jackers out each window, so you see me looking at the jackers, just hoping maybe I get one. If I do, this old camera's flying out of here, and you're going to see everything disappear for a bit. Uh, but I don't think that's going to happen the way it's going today. There's a good pressure ridge formed out here today. I was out deeper, and uh, I could feel the ice moving, and then it jarred. And I don't know if any of you ever felt that feeling out there. Uh, it's kind of an uh, interesting feeling. Oh, just kidding, I got a jacker up. Catch you later. As I was filming, that jacker right there went up. And I thought I had a really nice trout on there the way it was fighting. But nope. Was that there whitefish there? It's 23 inches long. So, uh, maybe there's a few left here in this lake. Anyway, that was fun. Now I gotta warm up. Hands are cold. They look cold. They are. And uh, back in my shack after catching that whitefish. Man, that's fun. That right there, that's why I come back. Because I might catch one like that. And that is so fun. And it's addicting. It really is. Um, I don't even want to tell people to come up here because it's addicting. And, uh, might be more fishermen i have to fight with but yeah so go to lake simcoe or something or go to lake of the woods it's better there just just go there and uh ah oh, so good i want to show you a little clip of my really fancy phone holder here for taking videos i just get the biggest kick out of this thing and that thing cool I don't even remember where I got it, but that thing is just like a weird snake thing. And I'm actually just using it for the first time this season. And we'll see how this all goes. Like I said, it it may turn out to be nothing. This may just be a couple of videos and done, but I'm getting a kind of a kick out of it. As long as I keep catching fish, I don't mind it. I'll try to resume where I left off earlier, later. Back out west, and as I said, I would finish up where I left off talking about those pressure ridges. If you're not familiar with what the pressure ridges are, it's where these sheets of ice, they separate, and then they come back together, and they push up against each other. One will go on top of the other, and then they'll just form layers, and then sometimes it just pushes those sheets of ice. You'll see them a foot and a half thick sometimes, pushing up over top of each other, and it'll just create a wall sometimes, and just stacking, and it's called a pressure ridge and they, they separate, creating open water, and they move only as far as they can because they're usually locked in by different points of land. And then when they come back together, they just keep smashing higher ice. And they are definitely something you don't wanna take lightly because there can be very unsafe spots out there. And what happens when they, they come back together, they don't just hit like this, you know, they go up on top of each other, but they do hit and you can feel that jarring and it'll sometimes knock you off your feet knock you off a bucket and you can actually feel this year was the first time i actually felt the ice moving before it actually hit the other flow it was just like i was going along and i was like oh crap and i was like bam you feel that jar and it's like ah and you're like okay that was cool and it's fun when the new guys are out there and they don't know what's going on or you know they hear about it but they've never experienced it Boy, you'll see people bailing out of their tents like they think the Lord's coming back again. They'll just flip that tent over. What the heck is going on? And it, it is fun, and it, it's an experience. It's uh, one of the uh, fun things about Lake Superior as well. Uh, there's just so many cool things about Lake Superior. And in those photos, you'll see how there's one separated, and then you'll see how some of them are jammed up on top of each other. Uh, last year I saw three four-wheelers and one snowmobile break through on those pressure ridges 
they're constantly changing. And so you gotta be really careful. You can go out in the morning and you'll have a solid, solid crossing. And you come back, you know, four or five hours later, it'll be open water or it'll be just water everywhere. And it's not safe to cross. So sometimes I've already went, you know, for several miles following along these pressure ridges, trying to find a safe place to cross. Some guys, they just close their eyes and hope for the best and that's not a good idea and so uh you know you just got to really be careful of lake superior if you're not familiar with lake superior don't go as a first timer and try to explore lake superior go with someone who is familiar with how lake superior works because it's not predictable at all so there's a little bit of education on how pressure ridges are and what they are on Lake Superior and what we get to see up there as we ice fish. It's an awesome place up there, but it's also dangerous. So there's a little bit of explanation on the pressure ridges for you. Hope this helps you out. Have a good night. This is the ice flow separation. You can see where it's jamming up, creating a pressure ridge here. Just another view, different place. Lots of people come to explore the ice in the spring when the weather is nice and warm. Including my family, we came out to explore the ice on a beautiful warm March day. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have a good day.